the child, the child that he's called me to be. Let's go! Come on, everybody, let's all clap our hands. Always gonna have a heart after him. Come on, everybody, let's all clap our hands. Always gonna have a heart after him. Let's bear fruit. That's what we're gonna We are talking about bearing fruit or producing fruit. We've talked about the fact that in order for us last month, we talked all month long about how we need to have a pure heart. Who can tell me the, the versions of a heart that we do not need to have? Number one, wayside soil, wayside soil which what is that? Pride, which is, what does it make our heart? Hard. Hard, right? So then nothing can grow. I can't receive, I can't give out, right? What about the next soil? Zaylin. My name is Zoe. I mean, Zoe, I apologize. <laughs> um, distractions. Distractions, which are? Stickers. Stickers, right? Distractions, just being distracted. That will keep you from producing. And we were called to produce. Say, I'm called to produce. I'm called to produce. Now, you're not called to perform. What does the Bible say? The Bible says in Jeremiah that God watches over his word to perform it. Remember the little mole rats? I don't have to become a little mole rat and go into the ground and make the seed, like crack open the seed and make it do the root. I don't have to do that, right? God said he will watch over his word to perform it. He has created a seed to perform in my life. But what is my job to do? Obey. Obey, yes, but another word for that is? Listen? Nope. Do the work? What must I do with the seed that's been sown? Use it. Steward it. Good, good job, job Ryan. Ryan. Get her a piece of candy or something. That was a good one. I was about to say that, but you didn't. It's our job to steward it. So pride, no pride, no distractions. There's one more we're missing. Ellis. What? what? Gravel, ground. gravel ground. And what does gravel ground represent? Evie? Uh, running, running, running everywhere. Two face. Two face. One foot in the world, one foot in the church, right? Doing things. It's not on solid ground. You're shaky. And whenever the storms come, what are you going to do? Fall. You'll fall. Will you fall forward? Yeah. No, you're going to fall back. Just like that horse. That was the worst thing ever, right? That horse, he couldn't get his grip. That's how believers are when they live two different lives. One at home, one at church. One at school, one at church. When the storms come, say when. 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 Because the Bible says in this world you will have. Say you will have. You will have. You will have trouble and tribulation, right? The enemy, what does he do? He roams around seeking whom he may devour. And if he can catch a believer on gravel ground, if he can catch a believer that's not stewarding the seed of the word of God, then what can he get them to do? Disobey, Disobey and fall back. Fall back into the old way of doing things. Literally, he can get believers to go back to the same trash they were delivered from. And it doesn't make any sense, right? The Bible says that a dog returns to his vomit. Not a believer. Say, I will not return to vomit. Y'all, even though that food was once good, if it's vomit now... I don't want it, right? So as a believer, I have to decide, I'm going to steward the word of God. That means I'm going to keep my heart pure, free from distraction, free from being two-faced, from being fake. I'm going to keep my heart free from pride, and then I will actually produce. So let's go in our Bibles to Colossians 1.10. This is our word verse. We're going to look tonight about this stewarding which is basically what y'all said, obeying or being a doer. Say, I'm a doer. doer. When I actually steward or do something with the word, I will see great fruit in my life. And there won't be time for anything else. Can you just think about like five things? Before I read this verse, while you're getting there, think of five things the word tells you to do every day. 
Five things the word tells you to do every day. Sasha, one. Hold on, wait till the mic gets there. What? Read the word. Read the word. Okay, Ryan? Praise Jesus. <laughs> Praise the Lord, right? Creedlin, what, what does the Bible tell us to do every day? Um, to read the word. Yes, that's good. Good job, Breland. To obey our parents. Obey your parents in the Lord. Yes, Sadie? We need two more. There's, there's a lot more, right? But we just, we're doing five. Obeying. What? Obeying. Obeying, yes, that's good. Willow? Um, not pout. Ooh, not pout. pout. So walk in love, be joyful. So we'll say walk in love. That's a good one. Be joyful, be forgiving. That kind of covers all of the love thing. Okay, there's one more that I'm thinking of. It's in Proverbs 423, I believe. <laughs> Zaylin. I mean, Zoe, good Lord. Why do I keep doing that? Jesus, nice. Faith. Um, not to be prideful. That is a good one, but that's love. If you looked at Proverbs 423, I think you would have found it. Zaylin, let's see if she knows it. Ooh, Sasha knows it. But you already did this one. What does the Bible tell us to do? Proverbs 423, that's okay. Be diligent. Be diligent? No. Is it not Proverbs 423? Above all else? That's not for it is okay. <laughs> Dang, Sasha, give the microphone to Sasha. <laughs> Guard your heart. Thank you so much, Sasha. Wow. Y'all give it up for Sasha. I mean, talk about excited. She almost Yeah, she was excited. Okay, so there's five things, and there's more, right? Raise your hand if you can think of other things other than those five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, blah, 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 blah. right? There's a lot more. <laughs> five things from the Bible that I know I'm supposed to do every single day. So what does that tell me? There are word seeds that are deposited in me that I'm called the steward. And I know there's at least five things, right? At least five. Say at least five. At least five. See, whenever I determine that I'm going to be a doer of the word... There's not going to be a lot of time for something else. That's why every day I have to decide I'm going to steward the word. How do I steward the word? I steward the word by being a doer of the word. The word that I hear, how do I steward it? Just like how are you stewarding the seeds that you sowed? What are you having to do? Water it and give it sun, right? In order for me to steward, that means every quiet time, every message, I have to do something with it. Well, I read in Proverbs today, and it was, it was weird. I didn't even know really what all it meant. How do I steward what I read in Proverbs? You think about one scripture. You just think about one scripture from the Proverbs you read. Because Joshua 1.8 says what? Meditate on the word day and night right? So just thinking about it, that's stewarding it. Then every message you hear, what should you do with what you hear? How do you steward? You take notes and then what? Study your notes and then what? Actually listen, do it, right? You're going to have to make changes in your life based on the word that you hear. And you're going to keep doing that forever. Do you ever stop growing? No. Do you ever stop making changes in your life? No. No. Because why? We're going we're gonna to continue until we see him face to face, right? We continue to look more and more like Jesus, just like our song that we just sang. I want to I wanna see you as a mirror. Like when I look at me, I want to see you. Well, how many changes are going to happen in, have to happen in your life in order for the next time you look in the mirror for you to look exactly like Jesus? What? <laughs> Okay, so plastic surgery. I'm talking about spiritually. But are there any changes that y'all need to make to look a little bit closer like Jesus? Right, there's going to be some changes. Well, that's going to continue. Look what it says in Colossians 1.10. It says that you might walk worthy of the Lord. Paul is talking and he's saying, I'm, I'm begging you. I want you to bring, be fruitful in every good work. I'm praying that you are fruitful. Now go to Genesis 1.28. Very first chapter. Who gets there first? I need you to really be there instead of just yelling there. I don't know who got there first. Good job. Y'all were all shouting there before you were there, so that one didn't count. Say, I've got stuff 
to do. Y'all, when you just actually do the word that you've already been given, like all of those things, you know those things are in the Bible. None of you had to go in your Bible and like look up something to do. You all knew at least one thing, two things, three things. How many of y'all at least could come up with at least two things that you knew you're supposed to do? Like right when I said it, it was like two things came to mind. I need to forgive. I need to, I need to obey, right? At least two things. Well, I guarantee you, if you sat and thought about it for at least a minute, maybe two minutes, how many of you could probably think of like 10 things? Why? Because you've heard the word, right? The word's been deposited in you. It's there. So I know the seeds that have been sown, but it's up to me to steward them. How do I steward the word? I do it. And listen, when I'm actually doing the word, I will not have a lot of time for anything else, especially there won't be time to sin. When you actually do the word, there won't be time to sin. Because why? You'll be thinking about what? Doing the word. When I'm actually doing the word. Just like if I had Curvin come up here and, and walk to the right. Curvin, come up here. Walk to the right. Right, yes. That way right? Keep walking right. You just keep walking right. Yeah, keep walking right. Keep walking right. Can Curvin walk right and left at the same time? No, he's either going right. Keep going right. Just like, all, yeah, just keep going right. You can go right all the way around the room. Can he go left? He's going right. If I, if I determine every day I'm going to do the word of God, then what will I not find myself doing? Sinning. Sinning. I won't have time for it. Right. Have you ever been like, you know, your mom says, hey, you need to do this. You need to do that. You need to do this. And you're like, thank you, Kervin. Give it up for Kervin. He's a good right walker. And you've like, mom, I don't have time for that. Have you ever said that? Like, I don't have time for that. Like, I've got this, 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 this. Well, that's how we want to be when it comes to the enemy, temptation or our own flesh. We are busy doing the word of God. Why? Because whenever I do the word, I'm stewarding the word and look what I'll do. Genesis 1 28. This was what I was created to do. It says this, and God blessed them and God said unto them, what? Be fruitful, be fruitful and multiply. Can I, can I be dying and be fruitful at the same time? No. no. I'm going to pick, right? And every single day I'm deciding I'm either going to steward the word and bear fruit and be fruitful or I'm going to give into the flesh and the wages of sin is what? Death. Is death. I'm either growing or I'm dying. What does the Bible say? You're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. You're not going anywhere, right? I can't say, well, you know, I'm just kind of chilling right now. I'm just kind of chilling. I'm just seeing what needs to be done. No, you're not ever chilling. Yeah. Guess what you're doing? Being fruitful. You're either being fruitful or, being lazy. or you're dying. Yeah. Period. Yeah. Spiritually, fruit is becoming rotten or it's getting juicier and juicier. Hello, I don't know about you, but I like juicy fruit. You know, my grandpa had an apricot tree. Apricot. Who says apricot? I say apricot. Anyways, I don't know why there's not a lot of apricot trees around here, but it was in El Paso. So it wasn't like in this like, you know, moisture area or whatever, but he had this apricot tree in his backyard. And so maybe he just, he did, he, take, he took really good care of his garden. He had a garden, he had all kinds of stuff. Any of y'all have any fruit trees in your yards? Do you know what there's a lot of here? It's pecan trees. Yes. And they drop pecans. But like the apricots that he pulled off of that tree, it was like they were just so juicy and they were sweet. So it wasn't just like juicy for no reason. It was like juicy and sweet. And if you go to the store and I would go to the store and I would see that there was apricots and I would get them, but it just wasn't the same. It wasn't juicy and it wasn't sweet. It's like, it looked like an apricot, but either they pulled it off the vine too soon, hello, jumped out of their season, or, you know, they sprayed a bunch of chemicals, they grew them weird in a lab, whatever it was, it just wasn't as good. I don't know about you, but I want to be somebody that produces good fruit. That isn't just good for me, but good for others. Because remember what I said, if I'm not fruitful today, if I'm not determining to steward the word today, the fruit that was going to come out of this, this time tonight, the fruit, 
peace, joy, long-suffering. If I don't steward the word I received today, the fruit that I needed a week from now, is it going to be there? No. The fruit that I needed to give somebody else a word of encouragement, is it going to be there? No, I have to steward the word I receive today. If I'm going to do what Genesis 1.28 says, and that's be fruitful. Now go to James 1.22, back to the back of the Bible. James 1.22. See, whenever I determine every day, I'm going to do the word. What am I not going to have time to do? I won't have time to sin. James 1.22. I'm there. Good job, good job. Good job. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. When you just hear the word, but you don't steward it by doing it, then what have you just done? What is this? You've deceived, you've lied to yourself. And what does that mean you've become? Starts with an R and ends with a religion. Religion. You become religious. You step into religion when you just hear the word and think you're good. Oh, I'm good. Oh, I feel so good about myself. I just sat down. I read my Bible. That is total Sadducee vibes and Pharisee vibes and ugly C vibes. It's ugly C vibes. It's ugly, right? It's just religious. Why? Because nothing's producing in your life. And you've built yourself up like you're all awesome because you went to church and you sat down and read your Bible, but the seed is just sitting there. Why? Because you're not stewarding it. You're not actually doing it. And so there's no real fruit. There should be real, tangible fruit in your life. What happened to the fig tree? It got cursed. It got cursed. Why? It wasn't producing fruit. It was not producing fruit. The leaves were there. And when the leaves were on the tree, that means there should be figs on the tree. So Jesus walked up and said, hold up, wait a minute. I'm about to curse a minute, right? So he cursed it. And it shriveled up to nothing. Did Jesus say, oh, I understand. This is like a tough season that really hasn't, you know, gosh, you've been through a lot. Did Jesus? No, Jesus said, hey, no one's ever, like he just whispered to the tree. Like he went up to the tree and was like, no one's ever going to eat of you again. And then he walked off. <laughs> like, bro, like talk about hangry. You know what I mean? Jesus was so mad. Like he wanted figs so bad. He was hungry. And he went to that tree and there was no fruit. So he didn't just say, all right, let's go to another tree. He was like, no one's going to eat of you ever again. Right? And guess what? No one ever did. Eight of them ever again. That tree did not get a second chance. Well, guess what? Sometimes religious people, guess what? They don't get a second chance. Why? Because they've deceived themselves. And then when they're even told, hey, bro, the fruit of your life is not good. Then what do they do? They get offended. They get mad. Oh, why'd they tell me that? Because your fruit is rotten, right? You have bad fruit. Say, that won't be me. I have to steward the word that I've been given. That means I have to be a doer. Look to your neighbor and say, be a doer. Be a doer. Not a do-doer. That's disgusting. If you're going to do-do, do-do in the toilet. Okay? All right, go to Galatians 5.16. Galatians 5.16. The word is alive. And the word is for us. And the word is for us to... Do. Not do do. But if you got to do do, do it in the toilet. Don't, don't do it around here. Do do in the toilet. Okay? All right, look at what this verse says in Galatians. Because if I focus every day on just doing the word, as I read the Bible, then do it. As I hear a message, do it. Like some change has to, has to happen every time I hear the word. An adjustment has to be made, even if it's just like a minor adjustment. Maybe you heard a message and there's like something that you'd been thinking about money. Like, well, I keep thinking that, you know, I'll never have enough and I shouldn't give. But then I heard in the offering that God wants me to be blessed and he wants me to have more than enough. I'm going to change that thought. So when that one thought comes about, oh, I have to be poor, I'm going to take out that thought, like knock it out with the thought that said, no, my God will supply all of my needs. I serve a rich God, right? Just even, even small things. It could be big things, maybe stuff you're dealing with your time. But every time, say every time. Every time. Y'all, every quiet time, there should be change. Yeah. Even if it's just thinking about something different that day. Like the word I read today, I think about today. And then the word I read tomorrow, 
I make a change. What should I think about tomorrow? The word that I read tomorrow, right? I think about, I should be making changes every time. Say every time. Every time time I read the word. And whenever I'm doing that, just like when Kervin was going right, did he have time to go left? No, because I told him, go, go right, young man, right? Go right. And what did he do? Go right. He went right. He didn't have time to go left. If I do the word every day, what will I not have time to do? What are some things I will not have time to do if I'm doing the word? Willow. Um. Sadie, what will I not have time to do? Um, play. Well, you might have time to play. Maybe not as much. Zaylin? Sin. Sin. Specifically, what? Kyle? Uh, to be jealous. To be. Je- I'm doing the word. I don't have time to be so jealous. Good. What? Yeah, that's so good. What about you, Zoe? To lie. I'm telling the truth. I'm doing the word today. I don't have time to lie. Sadie, I'm doing the word. I don't have time. To play. Okay. Thank you, Sadie and Sadie. (laughs) Maybe I'll need to cut out playing. Is that pulling on you? Is that tugging? Okay. Creedland, if I am doing the word, what do I not have time to do? Lie, sin, be jealous. What else? Mm. Starts with a diss and ends with obey. (laughs) obey your mom and dad yes I won't have time to not obey my mom and dad that's good Kervin hold on wait for the mic wait for the mic (laughs) disobey disobey thank you Kervin that is the one Micaiah if I'm doing the word I don't have time to have pride have pride oh ain't that the truth Abby I don't have time to gossip gossip oh my gosh I'm not talking about the word like, I can't talk about the word. Like, God loves you so much. Did you see what Makai was doing yesterday? He is the one and only true king. God. It doesn't flow. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't flow. When I'm doing the word, I don't have time for that. Evie. Uh, when I'm doing the word, I don't have time to what? Oh. That's okay. Ask Serenity. Throw a pity party. Oh, throw a pity party. Feel bad for yourself. Oh, I'm doing the word. I'm a child of the most high God. God knows my name. Right, Ellis? We need a boy. Ellis. Kervin. Kervin. Oh, we got some boys raising their hands. Ellis, it's your turn now. To run my mouth. Oh, run your mouth. <laughs> so good. Kason, I'm, I'm doing the to word. To be carnal. I don't have time to be carnal. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Titan, I don't have time to. Watch bad movies. Watch bad movies. I don't got time for that. Shamaria, I don't have time for what? To do bad things. To do bad things. I don't have time. Oh, Sasha. <laughs> Get in strife. <laughs> Get in strife. Oh, that's such a good one. I'm busy doing the word. When my little sibling comes in and they're trying to stir up, oh, I'm doing the word. I'm walking in love. I don't have time for this. I don't have time for strife. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put a smile on my face. I'm going to say, you want to play something? Let's play. You want to play? I'll give you five minutes. Let's play for five minutes, right? Because I don't have time for strife. I'm doing the word. Zarek, last one. Snitch. Snitch. <laughs> Okay, let, let me clarify. If you're doing something and someone's doing something they know they're not supposed to do, you snitch. then listen, you need to tell somebody. But if you're doing something you not, you, you're not supposed to do and you're just trying to make them look like the bad person for doing something they're not supposed to do, you're wrong for that. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Okay, so let's read Galatians 5 and then I want to show y'all something. Because y'all, we ain't got time to sin. Say, I don't have time for that. Say, I don't have time for that. Look what it says, Galatians 5, 16. This I say, walk in the spirit. Listen, walk in the spirit and you shall sometimes fulfill the lust of the flesh. You shall every once in a while. You shall not. Say, I shall not. Why? Because I ain't got time for that. It's kinda, it kind of reminds me of this, that we ain't got time to sin like she didn't have time to get bronchitis. Take a look at this. One resident describes her horrifying experience when she first realized the complex was on fire. I got bronchitis. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Barbecue, barbecue, barbecue. I said, oh, Lord Jesus, it's a fire. Then I ran out of here. 
Calm down. Why, why do I have time for the flesh? If I have time for the flesh, that means I haven't been what? I haven't been doing the word. I haven't been stewarding the word. If I have time for the flesh, I haven't been stewarding the word. But when I steward the word, y'all, I don't have time for the flesh. I don't have time to sin. I don't have time to lie. I don't have time to be jealous. I don't have time to be frustrated with my siblings or mad at my parents. I don't have time for that. I don't have time to be mad about schoolwork. Why? I'm doing the word. Ain't nobody got time for that. Ain't nobody got time for that. Look what David found himself having time to do. I'm going to read this to you. In 2 Samuel 11, 1, listen to this. It happened in the spring of the year at the time when kings go out to battle. Everyone say kings. Kings. That David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they destroyed the people of Ammon and besieged Rabbah, but David remained at Jerusalem. First part, it happened in the spring of that year at that time when who goes out to battle? Kings. What was David? He was a king. But what did David do? He remained at Jerusalem. See, instead of doing the word, David had time to sin. That's when he found Bathsheba. And that's when he fell in love with Bathsheba. And then Bathsheba got pregnant. And it wasn't really love, it was lust. Anything outside of marriage is lust. He fell in lust with Bathsheba. She gets pregnant, the baby dies, and then it sets sin in motion in his whole family. For the rest of his reign, it was struggle bus. For the rest of his reign. Why? Because whenever he was, it was the time to do the word. Kings go to battle. He didn't do that, so he had time to sin. See, when I determine every day, I'm going to do the word, then what will I say when sin tries to come? I ain't got time for that. Everyone say it. I ain't got time for that. Y'all, I don't have time for a bad attitude. I don't have time to run my mouth. I don't have time to gossip. I don't have time to steal. I don't have time to lie. I don't have time to dishonor my... I don't have time to hide. I don't have time to be lazy. Right? Why? Because I'm doing the word. Whenever I do the word, I walk in the spirit. What am I doing? I'm stewarding the seeds that have been planted. And whenever I do the word, I'm going to produce the fruit.